Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Colleges That Change Lives Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you all here this evening. We have four wonderful institutions who are each going to share a little bit more about what they do within the next 45 minutes. Each of them will have nine minutes to present. I do want to make sure that you know how to ask them questions throughout the session. So you'll see that Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen. That is your best way to interact with our college representatives this evening. Your camera and microphone are off and they'll remain off. So really take advantage of the college representatives that we have here for the next 45 minutes and send your questions in through that Q&A. A reminder that there are additional sessions being offered tomorrow. So feel free to check those out if you haven't signed up for them already. And that this session is being recorded and that the recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash CPCL within a week of this program concluding. And so with that, we will go ahead and get started with a very brief message from the Colleges That Change Lives organization. Good evening. My name is Christine Bowman, and I serve as the chair of the Board of Directors of Colleges That Change Lives. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to our event tonight, and I hope you enjoy engaging over the next two days with our member institutions to learn more about who we are and the exciting opportunities available at our institution. As an organization, Colleges That Change Lives is a 5013C nonprofit that is dedicated to the advancement and support of a student-centered college admission process. We support the goal of each student finding a college that develops a lifelong love of learning and provides a foundation for a successful and fulfilling life beyond college. In addition, we push back on the media frenzy that surrounds college admission. We help families de-stress the process and really hope that you will enjoy getting to know institutions and a little bit more about yourself. We want you to look beyond the rankings to see that each college has unique attributes and values that can help you grow and learn in your college experience. We believe in the liberal arts and we speak to the benefits of this type of learning in the college environment. And most importantly, as an organization, we support our member institutions in their activities to successfully welcome students to their college every semester. As an organization, we are 44 member colleges proud, 42 of us are private, and two are public liberal arts and sciences institutions. We are located in 25 states and have an average enrollment of just over 1,500 students. Now you may be asking, what is the liberal arts and why should I look at this type of learning in my college search process? Well, the liberal arts are neither about politics nor specifically about fine arts. The term arts is used in the sense of learning across multiple disciplines. And here we're talking about the natural sciences, the social sciences, the fine arts and the humanities. And within liberal arts colleges, traditionally what you will find is the opportunity to deep dive into a core curriculum of interdisciplinary courses and learning. You will traditionally find small discussion-based courses and classrooms. Professors who teach or when they research choose to engage their students in their research opportunities. Institutions that provide opportunities beyond just the in-class learning experience, things like study abroad, internships, community-engaged learning, and research are all ways in which students can grow and learn. And finally, liberal arts colleges often provide the opportunity to pursue multiple majors, interdisciplinary majors, or paired majors for that student that has more than one passion that they just don't want to give up. And this is really important because we believe that the liberal arts is an education for a lifetime. Outside of the class or in conjunction with your classroom learning, we know that at a liberal arts institution, you're also going to develop these important skills, creative thinking, interdisciplinary thinking, communication skills, both written and verbalizing, working with small groups and large groups, solving complex problems, as well as developing leadership skills and the ability to be a supporter in a journey for all individuals. And while in the beginning this might not seem important, as you continue in your life, 
this shows an incredible amount of influence because these are the skills that employers are looking for and endorse when they are thinking about hiring individuals. So the Association of the American Colleges and Universities worked with a broad group of employers to try to ascertain what is really important in the individuals that you hire. And it was resounding that of the skills that rose to the top, many of these were not specific to a major or to a, a particular trade, but were really encouraging people to develop lifelong skills that could be required and used across multiple disciplines. Things like we just talked about, communication skills, problem solving, creativity. The reason why is employers can teach you how to um, have knowledge about the business, but they can't teach you these skills on the spot. And when they're looking to hire, these are very important competencies that they are looking for in the individuals that they interview and ultimately make offers to. So we believe that this is an enhancement to the liberal arts degree, is that it not only teaches you knowledge, but it helps you have these skills that can take you not only into your first job, but to jobs further on down the line. Sometimes a private school investment makes individuals a little nervous, and we understand that price tag may look large, but the return on investment can be incredible. And the Georgetown University Center on Education and the Workforce shows that the return on investment for liberal arts education is nearly $200,000 higher than the median for all colleges. And that that 40 year return on investment over a lifetime of employment, the return on liberal arts institution is close to those of engineering schools as well as business schools. So you don't have to attend one of those specific institutions to see a lifelong uh, opportunity for engaged learning, engaged contributions to the community and a return on investment. So I hope this information is helpful for you as you begin your journey over the next uh, couple of evenings. If you would like to learn more about Colleges That Change Lives and our member institutions, we hope you'll visit our webpage and know that we have recently updated to add a college search feature amongst our institutions. So if you're looking for a specific major, um, opportunity to participate in athletics or a particular region of the country, we have a way in which you can get to know us better. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening. Wonderful. So now that you all know a little bit more about the Colleges That Change Lives as an organization, we'll go ahead and begin with our institutional presentations this evening. So to kick us off is the College of Worcester. Can you all see the screen? Looks Hopefully. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so hello. And first of all, let me say that I'm going to take you through the College of Worcester in um, just a very short minute. Um, but I do have to do a disclaimer for those of you that can see my image. I have a brand new computer. Can't you tell? And it's a little fuzzy, but hopefully my slides are coming through. Um, as a past College That Changed Life board member, I'm also really excited to be here tonight. Um, because I really value these collection of schools and I know that you're going to have fun exploring them and looking for your fit, um, just as much fun as I have working with my fellow peers at these schools in the admissions office. So let's get started. Um, all right, there we go. Um, so first of all, let me just start by saying I think sometimes when you hear the presentations at Labarts schools, we're really trying to differentiate ourselves. And so I'm going to talk about three different points and how those might look different at Worcester um, compared to some other schools. We're going to talk about our local environment, our local community, how vibrant it is. And we're going to talk about our global campus, what it means to be here, what the community is made up of, um, as our VP likes to say, our clever traditions. And then lastly, we're going to talk through um, why College of Worcester is America's premier college for mental undergraduate research, that word mentored that you just heard about, and what does that mean at Worcester, what does it look like? So the town of Worcester, if you're not familiar with Ohio, we're about an hour from Cleveland. We have a vibrant downtown with all kinds of local stores. You can walk there, you can have Hungarian pastries that are here, um, you know, you can get the, the local nutrition shakes, you can get the pretzels, all kinds of things. 
to be in a smaller community also means that you have a lot of things at your fingertips. You're not fighting for resources. So in this picture that you can see, this is one of our health coaches. So, you know, students can go out and they can work with internships in our local community. She's actually working on her own, um, taking the vital stats, taking those back to the physicians and really working as an assistant. Um, there's lots of opportunities to get involved with community service as well. We live in a town that is very diverse, just like our community. Community. And um, we want students to go out and interact um, with the community members to really learn and grow and thrive um, in the town of Worcester. And likewise, you're going to see community members that are coming to our campus to attend lacrosse events and um, theater events and choir events and see our marching band with our kids. I know all of you wanted to see our campus in a really uh, animated way with this um, shot, but I hope what this shows is that we're, while we're a campus of 140 acres, um, you really have a succinct campus so you can ride your bike from end to end. You can, it's really walkable. Our libraries, our um, dining halls, our rec centers are really in the center of campus. What does that mean? It means you're not walking down a long hill um, or taking a bus to get anywhere. You can really walk from a study session to a uh, to an event on campus pretty quickly and, and make it really seamless between your academic life and your social life. Um, it's a residential campus. You live on campus all four years um, and there's lots of places to really meet those fellow um, members with you. And we have all four seasons as you'll kind of see in this picture. So we just had our big IS parade on campus, our celebration. We did have bagpipers. We actually had you know, all kinds of things, donuts, airplanes flying overhead with banners. Um, but this is one of graduation in the spring as well. And so you can really get a sense that campus is alive and welcoming. Um, I think that when you, you start to think about campuses, you wanna know, you know, who's there? How am I gonna fit in? What's it gonna look like? What's it gonna feel like? What's that culture? And at Worcester, we have um, over two thousand, just under 2,000 students. They're uh, about 30% roughly are from Ohio, which leaves every um, other state represented in that large percentage. About 46 states, about 65 countries. I think we had maybe over 120 um, countries represented in our application pool this year. So it's a really diverse community. In fact, um, we have about 17% international students. It's the most diverse, um, internationally diverse campus in the state of Ohio. Um, so even looking at Ohio State and some larger institutions, when you're looking at percentage, um, we have um, the most international campus, about 24% um, domestic students have colors as well. And so you can get, hopefully get the sense that it is a place that you can start to see yourself. You can, um, you know, meet others that share your cultures, but you're also gonna expand that and learn beyond that and meet people. Um, it is a place that we want you to come and make it your home for four years. And so to be in a club um, is really easy to step into. It's a really welcoming campus. I know everyone has shiny pictures of people smiling, but I do hope that you get to visit and you'll get that sense. You'll really feel that connection. About a third of our students do music, about a um, third of our students are in varsity athletics. In fact, uh, a lot of them are performing right now because we pushed our fall and spring sports into one season. So it's, it's a hot mess on campus with athletics everywhere um, in the evenings. Then about a fourth of our students are involved in the theater and dance. Um, and our, our theater performances sell out just as quickly as our basketball games. And I think that's something to note at a school the size of Worcester is that we really do have a campus that supports others. And I think um, one of the things that um, you heard about from uh, Ms. Bowman and the opening welcome for the college that changed lives is this idea of mentorship. And what does it mean to have a mentor, right? So it, it, you know, it could mean someone that relates to you. It could be that somebody's pushing you. It could be somebody that helps you grow. Um, it could be just somebody that's taking you to lunch. Um, it could be somebody that's talking you off the ledge. But at Worcester, it's a collection of all of those things. So Worcester really stands out, as I mentioned, um, as America's premier college for mentored undergraduate research. And you, um, every student who's listening to this presentation, will have a mentor at the College of Worcester. In fact, you'll have many. But how it's built into the curriculum, how it's different from um, some other schools, is that at Worcester, 
um, your senior year, you'll take four classes, but one class each semester is you and a professor. For an entire senior year, you'll have one professor who's dedicated to you, who's a mentor to you, um, who's gonna help you work through a problem of your choice, uh, a project of your choice, uh, research of your choice. Um, and so you're gonna do this collective IS. So what does it look like before you get there? You know, the average class size is about 18. Uh, the faculty to student ratio is about 10 to one. Um, before you lead up to your senior year, you have to figure out what you're excited about, what you want to, um, what you want to major in. Worcester actually ranks typically in the top 10 for liberal arts schools in the country for um, internships. So it's a matter of getting you excited in the classroom, pushing you out into internships and fellowships. Um, if we had more time, I'd talk a little bit longer about APEX on campus, but it is something that you can start to hear and start to research. APEX is a wonderful opportunity for students to do, um, you know, research but abroad, a fellowship but abroad, or domestic. I've had students do documentary films on migrant workers in North Carolina. I've had students research water rights in Thailand. Um, and so it's about getting you excited about what you're studying and leading up to that senior year, that study project that we talk about. And so is it, um, is it a project where you're in a lab and you know, when you think of the word project or experiment um, in a white coat, sure, it could be, right? For those of you who are interested in science, looking at um, some genetic, genetic markers of cancer, looking at um, different pathogens that are in waterways, right? It can be all of that, but can it be creative? Um, this is a picture of Annie, one of my old students who I love dearly, um, who is now um, off doing a PhD. But Annie, when she was an undergrad, she had moved all over. And so for her IS project, she sung five different opera pieces in five different languages, one for every country that she had lived in, um, to kind of share her story. Fun fact about Annie is that she was also a math double major, and so she kind of merged those into a project. And can it be analytical? Absolutely, of course. One of my other students, who is now a middle school principal in New York City, actually analyzed um, a portrait of um, a book of um, students with different um, hair types and looked at how that affected their connotations. So all this rolls up to what mentorship means at Worcester and what it looks like. So hopefully you got an idea that it really helps you develop who you are, your confidence, your judgment, and it also helps solidify maybe what you wanna do after college. And so, and you look at who's done um, mentorship over the last, you know, since 2002, since many of you before you were born, it's Worcester and Princeton that have really been recognized again and again for that mentored research and how it's built in. So hopefully this gives you a little insight into Worcester um, and, but it was a quick presentation, but hopefully that got you excited. And if you have other questions, again, I'm Kathy Binks and I'm happy to answer questions behind the scenes. So thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Kathy, for sharing a little bit more about Worcester. As Kathy mentioned, don't forget that you can use that Q&A at any point during this session uh, to ask questions of our college representatives. But from here, we'll head on over to St. Mary's College of California. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is Philip Goodwin. I'm a senior admissions counselor and the visitor center coordinator here at St. Mary's College of California. Really excited to join all of you tonight. Thank you all so much. I also had the privilege of actually graduating from St. Mary's just five years ago with my bachelor's degree in politics and a minor in English. So I'll do my best to really highlight the student experience today as somebody who attended and graduated from St. Mary's. We are located in the town of Moraga, just about 20, 30 minutes away from the Oakland Berkeley area in the East Bay of California, about 45 minutes from the heart of the city in San Francisco. I tell folks we're about 45 minutes to an hour away from San Francisco. That's at like three o'clock in the morning with no traffic. Otherwise, it might take you a couple hours to get into the heart of the city, all dependent upon traffic. Although with COVID, it's relatively easy to get right into San Francisco. We're a super small private liberal arts LaSallean Catholic school. We've got about 27, 2,800 undergraduates, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, and just highlighting our liberal arts and Catholic LaSallean affiliations. We're also the only California Catholic and school to offer division one sports. That's part of the colleges that change lives as well. Just wanna highlight some of our, our great students here at St. Mary's. And I think something that's so really emblematic and symbolic of the larger greater Bay Area is that our students really resemble the Bay Area. So about half, more than half of our students actually identify as multicultural or as uh, students who are black, indigenous, or people of color. 
something that we really welcome, value, and celebrate here at St. Mary's College. That was something I was really excited about. I grew up in the Central Valley of California in Modesto, and I knew that I wanted to attend a college with folks that came from different backgrounds, different races, religions, ethnicities, gender orientations, folks that could work, we could work together and, and, and have different backgrounds and experiences as we were reading the same materials in the classroom. About one third of our students also identify as first generation college students, or they're the first ones in their families to go to college. And here at St. Mary's, you don't have to be Catholic to apply or attend St. Mary's. Actually about 54, 55% of our students identify as non-Catholic. Um, here at St. Mary's, students are required to complete two theology and religious studies courses. The first one's called Intro to the Bible and its Interpretation, really like using the Bible as your textbook for the class itself. That second upper division class requirement is up to your choosing. So you could take a class on Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, religions of India, to really give you and your fellow classmates a better understanding of the people of the world, but also the religions of the world as well. As I mentioned earlier, St. Mary's is a really small uh, campus. That was also something I was really excited about. I went to a high school, about 14, 1500 students. So I knew that I wanted a very similar college experience, making that transition from high school to college that much easier. Our average class size here at St. Mary's is just 19 students and our student professor ratio is just 10 to one. I tell folks when I was an undergraduate here, my smallest class size was just nine students, probably very similar to a lot of the colleges presenting here today. My largest class size was about 30 to 35 students. Students. So typically your general ed, math, science, history, English courses, or your major specific courses are often going to be your smallest classes. Two of our most popular programs here at St. Mary's will be our collegiate seminar, as well as our January term program. Very similar to like a Socratic seminar class that you might have experienced in high school. Our seminar class is capped off at about 18 students. And you'll take this class once for every year that you're a student here at St. Mary's. So you'll take it for a total of four classes. Your first semester, uh, you'll actually be your spring semester, but your first semester taking seminar, you'll be reading things like Plato, Aristotle, Sophocles, Euclid, really looking at the origins of the world, the origins of understanding and of math and science. And as you work your way towards your senior year, you start reading things that are a little bit more current. Martin Luther King Jr., Maya Angelou, Rosa Parks, and this is a class that's really gonna help you build on this liberal arts education, allowing you to build on your critical thinking and analyzing, your public speaking skills, your argumentation and debate. I tell folks, seminar is kind of like a book club for a book that you probably would have never otherwise signed up for. Uh, I think of not many people actually probably don't read, they probably don't read uh, uh, Plato, let's say, or Aristotle on a Friday night. For seminar, you might find yourself doing just that. And it's a class that's really gonna help you in life after St. Mary's. Uh, as somebody who, who graduated from Cal Poly with a master's degree, seminar really helped prepare me for, uh, you know, reading large amounts of material, synthesizing and analyzing 100 or 200 pages very quickly. Um, you know, synthesizing that into two or three pages of a, of a written argument um, back for that class as a class assignment. And seminar is really gonna allow you to utilize those skills in life after graduation. Our other really most popular program here at St. Mary's and my personal favorite is gonna be our January term program. So here at St. Mary's, we operate using the 414 system. So you'll take four classes in the fall, traditionally, four classes in the spring, separated by a one month long required January term class. And this, is, this class is unlike any other course that you probably have ever taken uh, and, and definitely different from other institutions. You know, my first year here at St. Mary's, I took a hiking class where you spend four weeks taking just one class. And in fact, we'd go out hiking each day. My sophomore year, I had the opportunity to actually study abroad. So you'll have the opportunity to study abroad. You can study here in the United States. You can also study uh, throughout the world. I spent a month living with host families in the Black Townships in our outside of Johannesburg, South Africa, working with women and children who've both been infected or affected by HIV AIDS, working with them to develop a household income via embroidery and beadwork and things like that. We also have a great on-campus course offerings too, like dogs and psychology, where you learn about dogs and their active role in society today by working with the local canine unit and the local guide dogs to the blind. You could take a class on Harry Potter, where you study and analyze and read Harry Potter like you might do the same for To Kill a Mockingbird, let's say. We also have a class that really allows students to explore the art of film at the Sundance Film Festival in Utah. And this is really the beauty of Jan Term. 
that allows you to kind of step outside of your comfort zone, do something, study something. You really get to be someone different for the whole month of January. Uh, so some really great opportunities that are changing every single year. So it might be offered one year, might not necessarily be offered the next year. Here's a wide variety of the list of our majors here at St. Mary's. So you'll notice that the, the ones highlighted in blue will be the actual major. And then the bullet points below will typically be concentrations or things that you can emphasize in throughout your studies here. I really wanna highlight our engineering three plus two program. You complete three years here at St. Mary's and then wrap up those last two years at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri, as well as our justice community and leadership program. It's really a great major for folks who are thinking about entering the teaching field. And also allows you to graduate in five years with your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, and your teaching credential, if that's a route that you're thinking about. Really want to highlight uh, our campus community, something that got me really excited about uh, attending St. Mary's. So for first and second years, you're guaranteed on-campus housing. First years are required to live on campus. We've got so much for students to get involved in. We, like I said, we are an NCAA Division I school, so we really rally around all of our sports teams, including men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, amongst others. It was really cool for me to be able to wave to my mom and dad on national television when we played Gonzaga on ESPN uh, my first year. It's really just an amazing feeling uh, to be part of a, a really tight-knit campus community that rallies around its sporting programs. It's also really common for students to, to work on campus as well, whether that's in the rec center, our career center, or even here in the Office of Admissions as our campus and student ambassadors. There's a lot of great opportunities for students to get involved, both for employment as well as campus clubs and things like that. Our students are definitely social justice minded, and that's something that we're really proud of, um, completing more than 70,000 hours of community service every single year. Just want to highlight some of our merit based scholarships. So this is uh, solely based off of your GPA and a holistic review process of your application, and those range all the way up to $30,000. So just something to think about as you're beginning this college search. We also award financial aid and more than 90% of our students are receiving some sort of financial aid by filling out the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So that's money that's coming from St. Mary's uh, the institution itself, as well as the federal Pell Grant or the state Cal Grant. Just something to keep in mind. And we also have some great transfer student scholarships. So if you're thinking about starting at a community college uh, for the first or second year, you can always transfer here to St. Mary's as well. We also have some great departmental scholarships. Just wanna highlight those different majors. It is a separate application potential uh, interview process. You can read a little bit more about the first year application process as well. Um, typically those will be the same deadlines for fall of 2022 deadlines as well. So mark your calendars for November 15th and January 15th as well. And then uh, some services here. So if you wanna take a quick screenshot of that, if you've got questions that you really wanna reach out to folks in advance, you're more than welcome to do that. And then lastly, one of the most important slides right after this one is gonna be our contact information. So if you'd like to reach out and chat with me further after tonight's presentation, please don't hesitate to do so. Thanks everyone. Great, thank you so much, Philip, for sharing a little bit more about St. Mary's. From here, we'll head on over to Whitman College. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jack Bittner. I'm an admission officer here at Whitman. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I'm also joined by Heidi Chapin, who is also an admission officer, and she will be in the Q&A helping to answer questions. So feel free to throw any of those just in the Q&A as I am speaking. But right from here, we will get started. So there are three things that I really want to focus on as I talk about Whitman today. And that's, you know, something you've likely heard from the other colleges already, that there are a lot of similarities between liberal arts colleges. And especially as we are talking to you all and sharing what we think is so great about our institutions, we like to focus on, on what differentiates us. And Whitman is certainly no exception. When I, you know, talk about Whitman, it's worth starting with the fact that we are a small liberal arts institution in Walla Walla, Washington. Um, Walla Walla is a small town of about 35,000 in the southeastern corner of the state. Um, in Walla Walla, you have a really quaint community um, and Whitman is at the heart of that. Whitman is really known for a unique kind of academic rigor. So we are a challenging liberal arts institution um, who prepares our students 
really well to enter into the, the professional world after graduation. And there is something that kind of differentiates us from, from other institutions there. And that is that while we are rigorous, our student body is really supportive of each other. There's not this com competition that's going to, you know, insert itself between other students uh, or students at, at other institutions, so to speak. And instead of choosing competition, our students here really choose collaboration um, more than anything else. And so at Whitman, we offer 50 different majors and minors. Um, I would encourage you to check out our website to, to peruse options there. Some highlights include things like environmental humanities, um, biology, uh, environmental studies, uh, theater, the, the list goes on and on, but there are a ton of different things that you can pursue um, while a student here. Uh, our nine to one student faculty ratio ensures that you're going to have great access to your professors. Professors aren't just gonna get to know, you know your name here at Whitman. They're gonna get to know where you're from, what your academic and co-curricular interests are because you're gonna bring all of that to the classroom and to class discussions. Our largest classes are going to be no more than 40 students and the average class size here is actually just 16. So again, really intimate class sizes in which you're going to be encouraged to engage with your professors and your peers as you kind of join together in this shared pursuit of, of learning. Students also pursue research at Whitman, either with a faculty member or on their own Many students will do it as part of their senior comprehensive exam, which is a graduation requirement for all students. Um, or you might pair with a faculty member as they are embarking on a larger project. We have a psychology professor who's about to be published for his research on disgust um, and how people respond to disgusting images. One of our student interns here in our office last year actually worked with him on that research and is getting a publishing credit um, once that, that goes to, into its academic journal. And then study abroad is something a lot of our students will also do, about half of them. They have a choice of 90 different programs in 45 different countries. One of our flagship programs is called Semester in the West. It's actually a domestic program in which students drive around the American West for a fall semester, going down the Pacific coast into Baja, Mexico, up through the Rocky Mountain West into British Columbia, and then ending back here in Walla Walla. Um, at the end of their time. And throughout that, you know, they're engaging with uh, community members talking about things like environmental justice and agriculture, tourism, land management. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really an interdisciplinary program that I think shows kind of the heart of, of what Whitman is trying to offer. Um, but it's not all academics. We really strive to support our students in all different ways as they think about Whitman. And so you're really gonna find a, an incredible level of support here. Um, whether that is in the academic realm, all of our students uh, have available to them our academic resource center, which can set you up with appointments for academic coaching or tutoring sessions that are one-on-one. -on -one. And you can do that once when you're struggling in organic chemistry, or you can do it once a week, the whole time you're a student and there is no you know, additional charge outside of tuition for those services. Um, we really wanna make sure as we are challenging students in their education that you also feel supported and like you can take this, this Whitman education head on. Um, but we wanna make sure there's, there's play and there's time outside the classroom as well. And we wanna support students there too. Uh, the outdoors is something a ton of students take advantage of because of our location in the Pacific Northwest. And through our outdoor program, students actually get funds to do trips and rent equipment um, every single semester. And so you can go rock climbing, hiking, backpacking, rafting, sea kayaking, the list goes on and on. Um, and then all of that is can take place on our, our friendly campus here in Walla Walla. Uh, a quaint town with our downtown just five minutes walk away where you can go to restaurants and coffee shops and um, some of the like boutique stores that, that are frequented by Whitman students. And then, you know, as you take this education and the community support that you receive, 
we want to think about how you really apply that. And that is making an impact, whether it's here in Walla Walla, in your hometown or around the world. Whitman students are really able to see the impact of, of their learning and their work. So 75% of students engage in some sort of community service here. That may be something as basic as volunteering at a local high school or something larger like a community fellowship with a local organization perhaps the mayor's office. It's, it's happened before and is certainly a benefit to being in the community of Walla Walla. The Student Engagement Center, which is our, uh, an office on campus, connects students with internships and fellowships as well as providing career services to all students at any point in your Whitman career. And we'll also pay for your internship. We offer up to $3,000 for an unpaid or underpaid internship um, and up to $5,000 for an unpaid internship internationally. So you can take an interest and follow it all the way around the globe and know with full confidence that you will um, be able to fund that venture. Um, this past summer, that internship grant was awarded to 150 students, nearly 10% of our class um, or 10% or of our whole student body. So you really see students taking full advantage of some of the support systems that we offer. And then once you've graduated, you tap into an alumni network across the country and across the globe um, at major corporations and at local organizations, uh, all eager to really help. And I think that that spirit of support carries with our, alum, our alums even after they have graduated. So as you think about the application process, and I realize we're still a little bit far in advance for, for those of you that may be juniors or sophomores, um, watching this, but we offer a couple of different ways to apply. You can see the different deadlines on the slideshow for early and regular decision. Um, our first round of early decision is due on November 15th, and then our second round of early decision and regular decision is due on January 15th. Just to clarify, early decision is the binding decision option and regular is non-binding. We use a holistic review process and test optional admissions to really get to know our students who apply. And so, um, you know, if you've had a rough semester or are just kind of coming into your own, we, I think, really take comfort in the fact that, that we can see students for their potential. And then we also offer really generous scholarships. Our students graduate with some of the lowest loan debt in the Pacific Northwest, uh, $10,000 under the national average, and we'll actually even guarantee your scholarship before you've even been admitted through our fin uh, early financial aid guarantee program. So you can check that out on our website. Um, but it's for these reasons that I really think Whitman is a place like no other. It's been a pleasure to share it with you all and do reach out with any questions. Um, thanks so much. Great. Thank you so much, Jack, for sharing a little bit more about Whitman. Uh, before we head on over to Willamette, I do want to make my final plug for that Q&A. If you do have questions for our college representatives, don't forget that you do have that opportunity to ask them. We will not have time for that general Q&A at the end of this 45-minute session. And so uh, if you have questions, now is a great time to send them through the Q&A. Uh, with that, I'll pass the mic on over to Willamette University. Thanks so much. Hello everyone, my name is Claire Leitzen. I'm one of the senior assistant directors in the Office of Admission at Willamette University. And we are so excited to chat with you today a little bit about what we have to offer. And I know we are running out of time, so I'm gonna go ahead and just jump in here. We um, were founded in 1842, we are, so we are a pretty historic institution. We were actually um, a university before the state of Oregon was recognized as a state of the union. We are located in Salem, Oregon, the capital of the state. And I'll get to that in a little few moments here. We are a four-year private liberal arts institution supported by three professional schools. So our Graduate School of Management, Atkinson Graduate School of Management, our College of Law, as well as the Claremont School of Theology. And I'm sure by now you are all aware that we are one of the 40 colleges that changed life, which is why we're all together today. I like to call this a quick number snapshot for you here, just to give you a gen general idea of who we are. We have 1,800 undergraduate students and 600 graduate students, so we are primarily an undergraduate institution. We have 52 academic programs, and so there's certainly no shortage of opportunity of things to study. With an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio um, and an average class size of 17, you are bound to see familiar faces everywhere you go. Your faculty will know you by name. You'll be expected to participate and engage in the classroom. So if that's something you're looking for in a college experience, Willamette definitely has that to offer you. 
A couple fun, fun facts for us outside of the academic experience. We own 305 acres of land just north of our campus and we call it Xena. It's what I like to call kind of an outdoor playground, particularly for our environmental science and biology students. They will go on collegiate level field trips and gather data and bring it back to the labs on campus. We also have a 54 year partnership with Tokyo International University in Japan. Their satellite campus is called Tokyo International University of America or TIUA for short. And they send about 100 120 international students over every year and they're embedded into our campus culture. So it's a wonderful cross-cultural experience for our students to be able to engage with those international students right here on our campus. We're also 76 feet away from the state capitol, again in Salem, Oregon, and 80% of the interns in that building are Willamette students. I think that speaks really well to the rapport we have, not only with local government, but also with the city of Salem. Our students are very much the heartbeat of our campus, but they're also very well respected within the Salem community. We have over 66 study abroad opportunities as well. So for students who are interested in doing that, there are wonderful opportunities that present themselves to you. Since we can't be together today, I'll show you a few spots of our favorite places on campus here. Um, you'll see that our star trees, which are the big trees that you see on the left side of your screen, those were planted on Willamette's 100th birthday. They are the largest sequoia trees outside of the Redwood Forest in California, and they get their name because if you go under and look up, it actually does create the shape of a star in the sky, which I think is pretty cool. And then you can see the big tall gold man in the background there, which is what we lovingly call him on campus. His real name is the Pioneer. And that is, you guessed it, the state capitol, quite literally across the street from our campus. As you see in the foreground, this red building in the front is the original building of Willamette University. Um, and it's where our president's office and many other wonderful places sit there today. This is my personal favorite spot on campus. This is the mill stream that runs um, and actually connects to the Willamette River, which is where we get our name. The building in the background that you see is our undergraduate library with a beautiful Whipple clock tower. And this green space you see is kind of the social hub of campus. Uh, I know that there are no students in this picture here. They might have been photoshopped out, who knows, but they are always students here in blankets. They are studying, they're eating lunch, they're doing their homework, they're meeting with professor, enjoying the beautiful sunny days um, when they come here in Oregon. It's hard to walk past you without seeing somebody that you are familiar with. I like to call this our caricature map of Salem. So you can kind of orient yourself here. This is our campus, the state capitol again, and then we're quite literally two blocks away from downtown Salem. So we've highlighted some of our students' favorite coffee shops and restaurants there. You can walk to the movie theater, you can walk to the grocery store. And then I always love to highlight that we are also quite literally across the street from the Amtrak station. So it's really easy to get up to Portland if you are interested in that. You're easy to get to the airport. Lots of reasons to kind of be able to go out and explore as well. We're an hour to the coast, an hour to the Portland, and an hour to the mountains. And then just to give you an idea of what a residence hall room looks like, this is a picture of one of our traditional double occupancy residence halls. And we do have a two-year live on requirement. I'll talk a little bit about our academic experience today. In the short time that we do have together, there's certainly so much more to learn, but two things that I do wanna focus on that are distinctions, I believe, at Willamette. Willamette's academic setting, one being our hearth system. And I like to describe our hearth system as family rooms in each academic department. So for the sake of example, let's take our chemistry hearth. Let's say you had a chemistry class earlier that day and you wanted to go study in the chemistry hearth, which is usually in our science building. And you're sitting there where there's comfy tables and chairs, um, couches among people who you had class with earlier that day. So you can engage with them, ask them questions, prepare for that lab that might be due tomorrow. And then surrounding that physical space, that family room that I like to call it, um, are your faculty offices. So that chemistry professor that you probably had class with earlier that day, their door open door policy is across the hall and you can ask about research opportunities for the summer. Talk about the opportunities that might be coming um, in the classroom or ways that you might be able to engage better or just get some more specific one-on-one -on -one opportunities to learn with them. Each academic department has their own hearth, very unique to Willamette's academic experience. And experiential learning is actually one of our general education requirements. Um, we have many in the natural sciences, the social sciences, and one of them, this experiential learning credit, is requires students to do one of three things before they graduate study abroad, do research, or have an internship. It's a wonderful opportunity for students to kind of take what they're learning in the classroom and apply that very practically outside of the classroom. 
I mentioned earlier, we have dual degree programs on our campus. We have a three plus three law program, a three plus two business program, as well as a newly launched three plus one data science program. And then we also offer three, two forestry engin engineering programs with separate institutions. We also just launched some new undergraduate programs in business, public health, as well as in data science. A little bit about life outside of the classroom here for us, where our students are involved in about two or three things outside of the classroom. So very involved there. We have over 100 clubs and student organizations, and it's really easy to create your own if you are interested in doing so. One of our most popular is our campus recreation and outdoor program that offers about 120 trips every year to hiking, skiing, snowboarding, surfing, whitewater rafting, you name it. Lots of wonderful opportunities to engage. We also have a handful of multicultural and affinity groups for students who are looking to identify, be in community with those who identify the way that they do. And we also have a very robust student government. A fun fact for you here is that Willamette's first graduate was a woman. Um, her name was Emily York, and she graduated from the School of Medicine back in 1877. This is a fun fact that we are very proud of, and Willamette was one of the earliest coeducational institutions in the United States. On average, our students are doing about two or three things outside of the classroom, like I mentioned. I believe this is a duplicate slide here, so I apologize there. I'm gonna to go to my next one. Um, we have 19 NCAA Division III varsity sports. About 25% of our undergraduate students do participate in our varsity athletics, and we will be 20 this coming fall. We're really excited to add our women's triathlon varsity team. We also have a handful of club and intramural sports if you're not interested in participating at that varsity level. Our um, intramural soccer gets really intense though. Um, our students love to cheer their peers on there. If you're interested in more of the music or performing arts ensembles, there are 20 of them for you to join. Um, instrumental, vocal, um, dance, as well as theater programs. You don't have to be studying music or theater to participate in any of those programs there. And about 15% of our undergraduate students do participate in fraternity and sorority life on campus. As we're running out of time here, I know um, we are a common application exclusive school and three, thing, three things to know about our application. There's no application fee, no supplemental materials, and we are test optional institution and have been test optional for many years now. We at Willamette believe in access to education and so we don't think that the application process should be a barrier for any student that way. With your application is your application for merit scholarships as well and those go, go up to $20,000 a year. Additionally, we have competitive scholarships that you can apply for on top of those merit scholarships and we do accept the FAFSA um, for federal aid. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me again. My name is Claire. I'm one of the senior assistant directors. Um, our virtual visits are plentiful, so we encourage you to go to the website there. Thank you so much for your time this evening, and we look forward to connecting with you further. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Claire, for sharing a little bit more about Willamette. And a big thank you to all of our college representatives for sharing a little bit more about their institutions this evening. Uh, and once again, a big thank you to all of you for joining as well. Uh, we hope that you found the information helpful. A quick note that you will see a very quick four question survey at the conclusion of this session. So if you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, it is very helpful as we continue to plan future events. A note that this is the last session this evening for colleges that change lives, but there are some more that you can check out tomorrow and you're more than welcome to sign up for those and explore your options. And a reminder that this recording will be available within the next week at strivescan.com backslash CTCL if you do need to return to any of this information. So a big thank you once again to everyone for joining us. We hope that you found things helpful throughout the fair this evening, and hopefully we'll see you for tomorrow's sessions. So long.